Well, that moment caught on camera where the Eagles wide receiver, Riley Cooper, is most certainly regretting right now. Now, the word you didn't hear in there was the N-bomb, and he dropped it when talking about security guards off camera that you didn't see when he was at a Kenny Chesney concert back in June. Now, that slur is certainly um, creating here a firestorm as to what is the right punishment here, and he certainly, Riley Cooper, has issued an apology. Take a listen for yourself. I'm extremely embarrassed. I'm um, extremely hurt um, and extremely sorry for my actions. Okay. Several of his fellow teammates on the Eagles, uh, the vast majority uh, are African-American on the team. They've been willing to actually look past this incident. Still love him as a teammate, still look at him as one of my brothers. We all got to think, look at it like this. You know, what if your son or daughter made a mistake in this fashion? How would you want people to perceive it? I've been there before, you know, uh, you know, very delicate situations, and we all understand. But, you know, somehow, you know, we all got to find a way to to get past it. It hurt a lot of people in the locker room. It hurt me personally. Um, and it, and it was kind of confusing. The reason it was confusing because I, I'm with him every day, and I know him. And, I, and the first thing I kept... So I was like, that's my boy, you know, that's that's my that's a good really good friend of mine. Um, but I don't think that is a reflection of who Riley is. I think that was an isolated incident. Maybe he was inebriated. Okay, and those were teammates who were willing seemingly to give him the benefit of the doubt. Although they put, if you listen to more of it in context, saying that they consider him a teammate, but they may not consider him a friend anymore. But a lot of his teammates weren't even willing to go that far. So like, um, it was a matter of thinking that the cameras were off, thinking that um, um, nobody's watching. And that's when a person really shows who they really are. Um, and that's, that's exactly what took place. Now, the Eagles, as a team, issued a statement Thursday afternoon saying, quote, we decided together that his next step will be to seek outside assistance to help him fully understand the impact of his words and actions. He needs to reflect. And as an organization, we will provide the resources he needs to do so. The statement didn't elaborate on the nature of the assistance, but Cooper has been fined, and apparently a pretty substantial one by the team, though the amount has not been released. But he has not been suspended, and the NFL said this is a matter. Um, they referenced the collective bargaining that the team um, uh, handles by itself here. I want you guys to talk more me, because... The N-word, um, I've heard debated, and it's funny, by African-American hosts and white hosts. It's, there's certain people can say certain things, right? Um, if uh, I make a uh, off-color remark about Italians, I get more slack on it than if you guys did. You guys can use a certain word I can't use. I don't care what anybody says. If fair or not, that's the real world. Different people can use different words for it. How would you, put yourself first in the locker room, you played college ball, sure. could you accept the teammate if he said that, even if you knew him for four years, um, as an isolated incident, or does that open up a chapter into who the guy really is in your mind? Well, no, you absolutely want to know who he really is. You know, did he say this out of the anger and spite, or just to hurt somebody, or is this truly him? Um, but I think at the end of the day, everybody deserves some type of uh, forgiveness for their mistakes. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter who it is. We've had Jesse Jackson talk about Jaime Town um, uh, many, many years ago, and he, and he made a mistake in, in referring. He was talking about uh, Jewish folks. He made that mistake. We've had uh, people refer to Tiger Woods when he, when he won, uh, I forget the name of the... Uh, the Masters. The yeah. Masters. Oh, well, you're going to serve fried chicken now. You know, think, people say things that are very hurtful, may not necessarily define who they are, but we can forgive you once. But if you continue to do that, then we know who you really are. But I think in this situation, you know, he deserves to, to have some forgiveness. And if he does it again, then we know who he really is. You buy that? Uh, definitely. That man should not lose his livelihood for one major, major, major mistake. He made a mistake. One more major. That's true. That's he, he, he made him a huge mistake. Um, we don't know if this is in his past. I, I would hope not. But you see, Richard, I really feel that we can't be a phony about this. We can't throw him under the bus. When you get on any D train in Harlem, 
any bus in New York City, and guess who's using the N word I, I on the you. transportation? I hear you and I've heard it too. The but my point American is, teenagers. I got you, Dominic. But you know what? They're not using it in the same way. Right, of course and not. And a white guy can't say that. Right. We no, know the nobody, rules. No nobody, white guy can say right. that. Yeah. No, but, but see, but Richard, no one should use that word. I, I'm not saying it's okay for what he did. He should be punished, uh, you know, whatever the team deems appropriate. Mm -hmm. But he shouldn't use his livelihood. Because the truth of the matter is, if we're going to be honest about this, the African-American Eagles players, some of them probably use the same words, re word referring to each other. I'm not saying it's right. It needs to go completely around the board. But give the give the brother a break. He made a mistake. If he does it again, then that's something different. Yeah. He made a mistake. Answer. We've heard I've heard this conversation the last 72 hours. Um, and this isn't uniform, but a lot of black commentators have been more willing to say, "Hey, he's an idiot. He deserves to get hit in a wallet or the pocketbook." And I heard a lot of white folks saying, time out here. We all know the rules. You never say that word here. And the league should suspend them. The league should do whatever. Um, I, there's not another word, I think, that has this power in, in the American culture right now. And I also think the context of where he used it, he was challenging security guards, all of them saying, you and, you know, I'll come after you and, and throw down with you, whatever he was saying. Um, I, I, well, first of all, I think what he said obviously is stupid. Forget the fact that he dropped the N-bomb. Even if it were just profanity, you don't talk to people that way, ever, I think. But I agree with Dominic. We have to forget about this faux outrage whenever something like this happens, whether it's Paula Dean or whether it's this case. You know, we're all adults and we know that language like this is inappropriate, but the better response to it, I think, would be to accept his apology, go on with life. If he does it again, as Dominic said, then there should be serious consequences. But if he doesn't do it again, why should we impose the professional you know equivalent what? of the I, death penalty? Well, I don't think you go death penalty, but this is why I don't think you chalk it up to the man made a mistake or Paula just screwed up. I don't think the four of us appreciate sometimes just how impressionable, I'm not just talking kids, people are. People read things, like after the Zimmerman verdict, and say, hey, you know what? Stand your ground. I mean, people believe, conse if consequences don't get attached to actions, people misread, where you say use some discretion, you won't do it again, or whatever. I know there will be idiots out there to say if there's no punishment for him, it's okay to say the N-word. Uh, and I'm telling you, there has to be some consequences that get attached to stuff. Now, if we want to be really real, if the, if the black players in the team called somebody a cracker, would anything happen to him? Of no, course I, not. Well, and no, I, I, I think if they said it public, certainly, I think someone would I don't Really? So. Absolutely. Cracker. Absolutely. You, don't, you, don't, you don't hear many black people walking around on TV calling white people crackers, period. Because we already know that's not what you do. <laughs> Who's offended by that, though? It's a totally different dynamic. Well, not George Jefferson, but... Yeah. <laughs> But well, how about homophobic remarks? Another, um, in in the gay community, uh, they can say something to it. Yes. All of a sudden, a straight person says it, and that is out and out bigotry. And w there should be a double standard. Nobody should use it at all, but there is two different meanings depending on who's saying it. Well, I disagree. I think, first of all, I, I'm going to, again, take the Dominic Carter line. I really think nobody should be saying a gay slur or a racial slur mm -hmm. ever. But I don't think there's a double standard. I don't think gay people are allowed to use gay slurs. And I don't think African-American people are allowed to use African-American slurs. Of course slurs. they are. Well, but they I don't are. think it's right. I'm not saying it's right, but they do. And I, the real words are one thing, and whether it's fair or not, yeah. I just don't think there's certain words that come, come out of certain people's mouths. So Richard, well, all, all I can tell you is that you're talking about double standard. It, I mean, I'm, I'm not so much concerned about this one football player. He shouldn't say it. I, I'm willing to bet he won't do it again because his career is on the line. Right. I'm more Wait insulted. Wait when he goes across the middle. Or, or yeah. when he's got to play against yeah. those African-American yeah. yeah. athletes. That's right. I'm it's more, more insulted. You guys, you guys right. That's right. The NFL. I'm more insulted. These kids, these kids of color. You ride on the train. Do you ever listen to yeah, what these no, kids absolutely. say? Absolutely. The, the girls. 
my end, my end. Yeah. And uh, no, the pants hanging all down the backside. We got to see the crack of your behind. You talking about my end? People fought Jews, blacks, Latinos, fought for the right for us to sit at this table. And you sitting around, you, you doing the work of the Klan? I mean, I, I'm not concerned with him. No offense, I think he was had too much alcohol. I'm not making excuses for him. Because after the first two games when he plays, I guarantee you he won't do it no more when them brothers hit him coming right, across right. the middle. That's a wrap for as far as him. Exactly. But I'm talking about the kids, Richard, what the black kids say. Because then that says to the white kids, oh, it's okay. Look at the black kids. They're calling each other in. But the Latino kids, too, also do it. Right. And I, I mean, people even talk about it. I go to a Latino barbershop and they're in it all over themselves. And, and let's like, not even start. We give the rappers a pass. Yeah, I like a Jay-Z song, but come on. You're, okay, who's got more influence, Jay-Z or this one football player? Who's got more influence on the community? All right. Uh, when we come back on RFL, should the U.S. boycott the Olympics in Russia? How do you like that for a transition? Uh, we got a lot of anger growing over some anti-gay propaganda coming out of Russia, but also... Now that uh, the U.S. Uh, decided, uh, or I should say Russia decided, to stick a thumb in the U.S.'s eye by granting Edward Snowden asylum. We're going to talk about that. As a lot of people say, we're not going to the Sochi Games. We'll discuss that after this.